in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. He shall reward evil unto my enemies. Destroy thou them in thy truth, O Lord, my defender. Save me, O God, for thy name's sake, and avenge me in thy strength. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is with those that behold my soul. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Him for the introit. Him for the introit. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise and adore him forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. My dear people of God, today is the ninth Sunday after Trinity in ordinary time. We shall pray for one another. We shall pray for the nation, the Gambia, for its people. We shall also pray for those who are in leadership. We shall pray against this pandemic of COVID-19 that have ravaged the lives of so many people in the world today and in our societies. Our intention of the Mass today is to pray for the healing power of God over each and every person, affected or infected. We shall also pray for world peace, and we shall pray for the joy of family life. We shall be quiet for a moment as we approach the Lord's table. Let us pray together the prayer of purity together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and there is no truth in us. But if we confess our sins to God, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins to God for forgiveness so that we would be cleansed to enable us to share in the fellowship with Christ in worship and communion in his name, meekly kneeling upon our knee. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought, word, and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. 
We are truly sorry and repent for all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Hear the comforting words our Savior Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not die, but have eternal life. This is a true saying, to be completely accepted and believed. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone does sin, we have someone who pleads with the Father on our behalf. Jesus Christ the righteous. And Christ himself is the means by which our sins are forgiven. And not our sins only, also the sins of everyone. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent and are themselves forgiven, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on us. We shall say the Gloria in excelsis together. Glory to God in the highest, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sitteth the right hand of the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou art only holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Father, thou most high, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Amen. Lord, have mercy on us and write your laws in our hearts, we pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The collect for the ninth Sunday after Trinity. Grant to us, Lord, we beseech thee, the spirit to think and do always such things as be rightful. 
that we who cannot do anything that is good without thee, may by thee be enabled to live according to thy will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, one God, now and forever. Amen. The liturgy of the world. The Old Testament reading. The reading of the Old Testament is taken from 1 Kings chapter 19, beginning to read at verse 9 to 18. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 9 to 18. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, earthquake came, a fire but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came, a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came, and go to the desert of Damascus, and when you get there, anoint Hazael, king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Safath from Abel-Meholah, to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death anyone who escaped the sword of Hazael. And Elisha will put to death any who escaped the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel. All those knees have not bowed down to Baal, and all whose mouths have not kissed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Psalm 85, verse 8 to 13. I will listen to God, the Lord will say. He promises peace to his people, his sins, but let them not return to folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth, and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good, and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 10 beginning to read at verse 5 to 15. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 10, verse 5 to 15. 
Moses describes in this way the righteousness that is, in, that is by the law. The man who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is to say, that is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith. We are proclaiming that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Continuation of our Holy Gospel according to Matthew. St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, beginning to read at verse 22 to 33. St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 22 to 33. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Beloved, the Gospel of Christ. I speak in the name of the Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Seeking solitude was an important 
priority for Jesus Christ. Seeking solitude was an important priority for Jesus Christ. When Jesus heard what had happened, Matthew chapter 14, verse 13, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. When Jesus heard what has happened, he withdrew quietly to a lonely place. Hearing of this, the crowd followed him on foot from the towns. They followed him. Jesus always make room in his busy schedule to be alone with the Father. He made time to commune with his father. Needless to say, today COVID-19 has forced us to be alone or been restricted one way or the other. We are not as free as usual. Business is not as usual. Spending time with God in prayer nurtures a vital relationship and equips us to meet the challenges and struggles all the time when you spend time with God. It nurtures a vital relationship between you and God and equips you to meet the challenges and the struggles of life. Develop the relationship of spending time alone with God. It definitely will help you to know and to grow spiritually and become more like Jesus. Peter said, Lord, if it is you, Tell me to come to you on the water. Jesus walked on water. And Peter, trying to demonstrate his faith, said to Jesus, If you are really Jesus, if it is you, allow me to walk on water and approach you. Peter was not putting Jesus to the test. Sometimes we are told not to do that. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 7, the temptation of Jesus in the desert, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. So in actual words, Peter was not tempting Jesus, but Peter was going away about demonstrating his faith in Christ. In fact, Peter was the only one in the boat to reach to faith. His impulsive request 
led him to experience a rather unusual demonstration of God's power. Verses 25 to 29. When they saw Jesus, they were terrified, thinking it was a ghost. They cr he cried out. They cried out in fear. Jesus said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. It is I. Don't be afraid. We are all reminded in this pandemic to take courage by scriptures and not to be afraid. Jesus said, it is I. With faith in the Lord, we apply the regulations of the WHO, government guidelines, and set principles to help mitigate COVID pandemic. Jesus said, don't be afraid. We should not be afraid of COVID-19. But we as faithful people, people of faith, a community of faith-based people, must demonstrate our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid. When Jesus told Peter to come after, to come on, after Peter requested to walk on water, Peter got out of the boat walking towards Jesus. That was fine. He was walking when he fixed his eyes on Jesus. But when he looked at the wind, then he was afraid and began to sink, crying out, Lord, save. But it is important for Christians to know that our eyes should be focused on Jesus. Immediately, Peter removed his eyes on Jesus and lost the concentration and spiritual touch, focusing on the wind. Then the problems came. He began to sink. Why did Peter sink? It is because while Peter was on the boat and was focusing on Jesus, he came out of it and started walking on water. Then immediately, as he was walking on the sea, his mind was fixed on Jesus. But the moment Peter removed his attention on Jesus, he started sinking. So it's our lives, Christians. If you focus on Jesus, you will be kept afloat. Amen? If you remove your eyes from Jesus, you will begin to sink like Peter. We may not walk on water, but we walk through tough situations. Everybody walks through tough situations. Even today, we are presently walking on tough situations as a nation, as a church, as a community, and as families. Yes, many have buried loved ones, some are in quarantine. Others are in critical situations and conditions. The world is in a jigsaw. 
not knowing what exactly or how to figure out this pandemic. But Jesus says, don't be afraid. If we focus on the waves, as Peter did, the waves of difficulty, of difficult circumstances around us, without looking to Jesus for help, we too may despair and sink. To maintain your faith when situations are difficult, keep your eyes focused on Jesus' power rather than on your inadequacies. My dear people, we are in difficult times. Although we start out with good intention, sometimes our faith falters. This does not necessarily mean we have failed. No. When Peter's faith faltered, he reached out to Jesus. Today, the ninth Sunday after Trinity, I implore the faithful to apply faith in what you do. The corona pandemic will come and go, but our faith in Jesus Christ will never dwindle in Jesus' name. Yes, indeed it will. Corona will come and go. But its destruction, its sting of death and destruction, and seemingly inconceivable, cannot and will never dwindle our faith in Christ. We will conquer this pandemic. Because we are united in our resolve as a nation and as a church. The Christ God in me is greater than the devil in Corona. As a nation, our resolve is to win and to win and to win. Because Jesus is a winner man. I, by the power of the Holy Spirit, come against the evil forces of COVID and present to you faithful the crowned lamb that destroys COVID-19. Let us continue to fix our eyes on Jesus as a nation in faith. The moment we remove our eyes, we begin to sink. Our strategic plans, our plans of action. Let us all bring them together and submit them under the footstool of grace in Christ Jesus. He, Christ, will take all our yearning, our aspiration, our desire, and our resolves, and make it his. Work on water with faith and with Christ, and focus on him as Jesus walked on water, so can you walk over your difficulties because you have surrendered everything to Christ. When a nation surrenders everything to Christ, that nation is guided by Christian values and Christ-like thought. Our desires and aspirations 
are soaked in the blood of the Lamb. And we shall go through this pandemic in faith. But we shall win. We shall win as a nation. And we will never falter. My prayer to you today is God will guide us and God will enable us to fight and fight and win and win to the very end. Take courage. Those who have met with difficulties, those who have buried loved ones, know that God is with you and he will never, ever leave you alone. Our desire and resolve is to win and win and win in Jesus' name. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. and sisters in Christ shall now affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all Lord things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the Lord, only begotten Son, Son of God, God begotten of the Father God before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us on a Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who speak by the prophets, and I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the, for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the faithful for the world. May it please you to lead the nations of the world in the paths of justice peace and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, graciously hear our prayer for our country. May it please you to guide with your pure and peace-given wisdom those who hold authority in the affairs of our country 
especially Adam Abaro, our head of state, and all those who rule over us, that people may honor one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Graciously hear our prayer. For the local community, may it please you to guide and prosper all those who are laboring for the spread of your kingdom, enlightening with your Holy Spirit all places of education, healing, and learning. Lord, in your mercy. Graciously hear our prayer. For particular needs, the poor, the sick, the suffering, the dying. May it please you out of the abundance of your mercy to comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, all those under the tyranny of oppressors, all those who are in prison, all those who have lost their faith. Give them courage in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Graciously hear our prayer. And now we praise you for all your servants who have departed this life in your faith and fear. And here, Lord, we remember those families who have buried loved ones during this pandemic. We bring our prayers to you and pray that the souls of all those who have gone ahead of us depart to rest in perfect peace. Lord, in your mercy, graciously hear our prayer. Jesus says, I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I've loved you. So you must love each other. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We shall offer a Lord as peace of the Lord. Of a tree sentence. The statues of the Lord are right and rejoice the heart. Judgment are sweeter also than honey. And the honeycomb, moreover, by them is thy servant's thought of a tree, him, him for the offer tree.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which art has given and human hands have made. For us, it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us, it becomes the spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice of our hands to the praise and glory of his name, both to our benefit and that of all his church. Amen. Amen. Throughout all ages, world without end, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is very meet and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places. Give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, And therefore, we praise you joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their own and in him. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praise, heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. My Lord and my God. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me.
Christ has died. Christ is risen. And Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all on the cross, and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. As we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with his bread and his wine, his one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him our great high priest, the sacrifice of thanks and praise, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Through him and with him and in him, by the power of your Holy Spirit, with all who stand for in Adam, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing, blessing and, and honor, honor and glory and power, be yours forever and ever. Amen. Throughout all ages, world, Without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Commanded by thy saving precepts and taught by divine institution, we are bold to say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Amen. hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Amen. thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Deliver us, O Lord, we beseech thee, from all evil, past, present, and to come. And, and the, at the intercession of thy blessed and glorious ever virgin, Mother of God, with thy blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and with all thy saints. Favorably grant peace in our day, that by thy help of thy divine mercy, we may ever both be free from sin and safe from all distress. Through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, Amen. throughout all ages, world without end, Amen. the peace of the Lord be always with you. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, Jesus, bear of our sins, Jesus, Redeemer of the world, prayer of humble access together, most merciful Father, we do not presume to come your table, trust in our own goodness. We come trusting only in your great goodness. We are not worthy even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, never change. Your nature is always to have mercy and to forgive. Grant, gracious Lord, that as we eat and drink these gifts of bread and wine, they may be to us the body and blood of their Son, Jesus Christ, so that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Let these mis heavenly mysteries, O Lord, renew us both in body and soul, that we who therein offer unto thee our outward worship may inwardly feel the effectual benefits of the same through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thanksgiving prayer together. Almighty God, thank you for feeding, feeding us the with the body and blood of our Lord. Our recessional hymn, recessional hymn, or closing hymn. for God's blessings. The peace of God which passes all human understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Mass is ended.